Talking to Larry McDonald, author of A Colossal Failure of Common Sense. Here, we're here at the European Business Summit and you've just been involved in the financial services uh, debate. There's clearly interesting elements relating to financial services products and the work of the major investment banks, but it seems as though the issues aren't really being taken seriously at a policy level yet. Um, what did you think of the session? The session was great in terms of good back and forth. We had a wonderful panel. We had a, a very high-level executive from Goldman Sachs. We had a high-level executive from uh, ING. And we had a, a per, some well-respected people from private equity as well. Um, I, I think overall what's happening today is so critical because we have regulators around the world that are trying to come together and uh, really control this beast, you know, this seven-headed serpent in Wall Street in terms of risk-taking, in terms of all the, t all the taxpayers around the world that are kind of left holding the bag. And what I've been trying to do on the lecture tour and in my book, A Colossal Failure of Common Sense, is bring people inside uh, some of these regulatory reforms and really teach people about what's really going on behind the scenes. Okay, now an interesting element of, of the, the products you, that you've been describing, the products that are described in the book, uh, which from what I can tell, it's not too complicated, so it's, it's well worth the read. There's, you know, really it's, it's, uh, it's a a collection of vehicles that transfer wealth rather than generate wealth for the, the original shareholders and stockholders. Would you agree with that or disagree? Yes, some of these 21st century financial products uh, years ago didn't exist obviously because they're 21st century financial products. Years ago in the 90s Wall Street investment banks did a lot more IPOs, did a lot more, um, a lot more um, investing in communities, uh, a lot more doing deals where they're actually creating jobs. Around the turn of the century, uh, you had these big banks on Wall Street uh, that are now competing with investment banks. So you had, after, after the turn of the century, JP Morgan and Citigroup are now competing against Goldman Sachs and Lehman Brothers. That wasn't the case in the 90s because the big banks in the 90s weren't allowed to take risks. So what happened after the turn of the century is that you had banks started to get more and more into risk taking. Uh, they started to do more directional betting instead of customer trading. And that's one of the reasons why we're in this situation today. Now the particular panel that you were on, as you just mentioned, had someone from Goldman Sachs. He mentioned that he felt that we need a more stable investment business model, that we need less leverage, we need to be taking less risks in investments. Aren't Goldman Sachs and the very big investment banks, people that are really involved in that, it's, it's not their job to tell policymakers, I would humbly suggest, it's their job to just take action. What, what would you say? Yeah, I mean, most importantly, the policymakers and the regulators are um, at a disadvantage against Wall Street executives. Wall Street executives get paid a lot of money um, on the 31st floor at Lehman Brothers, that was our executive suite. We call, I call it in the book the ivory tower. You had people that are making 10, 20, 30 million dollars a year. Regulators are making 80, 90,000. It's not really an even playing field. And it's up to Wall Street executives to control risk, to control leverage, and understand 21st century financial products. One of the problems we had at Lehman was you had senior executives that were really in charge of the in chip that are driving us towards the iceberg at 167 miles an hour that really didn't understand all the leverage in the system, all of these crazy 21st century financial products. Now an interesting element of what's happened over the last couple of years, and you touch on it just then, relates to the inability of regulators to really control and really keep a, a, a handle on what's going on. When there's such a, a big disparity in pay, if, uh, if you go and get yourself a job for the SEC and you're monitoring derivatives, you might perhaps earn $100,000 a year. Two years experience, you then move to a big investment bank, you're on $5 million a year. It's very difficult to keep talent. How can the regulators really, really keep up and really keep that balance? It's so important that the regulators and the rating agencies especially uh, bring in talent and pay talent. In other words, actually, I almost want to, I, I have a kind of a joke back in the United States, we should bring back the military draft. Literally, force the regulators like the FDIC, the FSA, the SEC to actually have people from Wall Street be responsible to actually work with the SEC for a year or two or three, work with the regulators and help these regulators understand 
what's going on on the trading desk. One of the reasons why I'm on this global lecture tour, I've spoken in Beijing, I've spoken in Oslo, I've spoken in London, I've been speaking all over the world, and I've been working with the regulators, educating them on derivatives, on the leverage in the system, and it's very, very important that they not only make the effort to learn, but that somehow they change their compensation structure to have important new people from Wall Street come in. In the United States, it's, um, something very, very encouraging happened. Uh, Sheila, I'm sorry, Mary Shapiro, who's the head of the SEC, actually brought in one of the chief legal people from Deutsche Bank, and he's helping on the Goldman Sachs investigation. He's kind of leading it. So there's a real insider from Wall Street working on an investigation. We need a lot more of that. If I return back to the panel session just for a moment, because obviously this is EBS, we should really be talking about EBS. Yeah. Financial education was, was one of the topics covered by your discussion. There are clearly huge loopholes in the population's knowledge generally about finance, but there's also, I think it's fair to say, huge loopholes and huge gaps in the knowledge of professionals about finance. Where would you, where would you take this? Well, I've been, um, you know, first of all, EBS, uh, I owe a lot to them for inviting me here. Uh, it's been an absolutely wonderful experience to be in Brussels and meet, meet the people of this community. Um, on the lecture tour that I've been on, I've been speaking at, in, at, at colleges, so I've been speaking at uh, University of Florida Business School, uh, uh, di different colleges like DePaul University. And what I'm seeing is the younger people are so scarred by what happened. Imagine getting out of school in 2008 and going to that job market and you want to get into finance. It's like you have zero chance to get a job in 2008 because the world is crumbling. So I think that a lot of younger people are making an effort to understand there's a lot of um, uh, kind of educational process going on, bringing Wall Street people into, into business schools mm -hmm. and have, bring real world uh, experience into the business schools and that's what I've been involved in. Okay, Larry, it's very kind of you to talk to us. Thank you for your time. Thank you.